And we back. I don't really want to keep harping on the Eagles game, but it's a bye week, and that's pretty much the last thing that we did here. Plus, I want to take a look at Jordan Lewis, and you know, Jordan Lewis played in the Eagles game. I think this would be a great time to great time to take a look at him. You know, I think that's a that's a big question moving forward to this Giants game is uh, who's going to be starting Jordan Lewis or um or um A B. So I'm just kind of putting in my thoughts on Jordan Lewis. Take a look at this play, right? This very first play, Jordan Lewis is lined up in the nickel. He's right here. Everybody, please, man. And this is what I mean, right? This ain't even me breaking down this play. This more so what happens after the play. Look at Jordan Lewis right here. He's right there. He's right there. Take a look at Jordan Lewis. Look, look. Get your ass up. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm talking about? We need a little more of that. We need a little more tone setting. We need a little more attitude. We need a little more dog on this defense. I ain't calling Anthony Brown soft. I don't know the dude. He may be he 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 may have been fighting his whole life. He may punch you in the jaw. I don't know. But as in terms of what comes up on film, in terms of what comes up on film, Jordan Lewis ain't scared of none of these hoes, and he'll let it be. You know, he'll let it show. You know what I mean? I'm not going to show too, too much post, uh, post snap stuff or whatever, but Jordan Lewis was really going at Aguilar the whole game. And uh, that may be a reason why Aguilar wasn't too, too effective in this game. You know what I mean? Just small things like that. Plus his coverage ability, plus him being able to be like a, uh, like a solid tackler and all that stuff. And, you know, like I said, I got all the, all that film to show you. He get it from the cartel if you look at him. Why are you still holding on to my guy? What are you doing? Get up. You know what I mean? Let's keep watching. I got some actual football to show you, though. Something that happened in the game is we would either play a lot of base defense or we would play play nickel. You know, when the Eagles came out with their two tight end sets, you know, it, you know, we could play it either way, really. So what happened is either Sean Lee would be on the field at Sam or we'll take him out and put Jordan Lewis on the field at nickel. You know what I mean? So what ended up happening when Vanderish got hurt is uh, Sean Lee ended up playing Will and we just left Jordan Lewis out there at the nickel spot, right? I'm fine with that. So both those guys ended up being out here. This ain't one of those plays like i think uh joe is out there what yeah joe's right there but um what you end up getting with that and which i'm fine with what you end up getting is that you get jordan lewis on the line of scrimmage and i like my corners you know that that can tackle i like corners that 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 are willing to tackle you know what i mean jordan lewis is that guy we see him right here in the nickel he's going to read this run diagnose it you know what i'm saying get downfield uh, downhill and he's gonna make a play man Make a play in the run game, too. Like, we know Jordan Lewis can cover, um, and we ran a lot of zone coverage. I think Jordan Lewis is at his best when he's man covering people, but, hey, man, he'll get his opportunities there. But in terms of 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 tackling or whatever, like, we know he we know he can he can cover, but we're not losing anything uh, when Jordan Lewis is on the field tackling people, man. He's just a little more a little more tenacious in that way. You know what I'm saying? Who is 53? That's, uh, that's – what are you on the field for <laughs> anyway anyway moving on um like i said now here's the uh the uh, cartel view jordan lewis is actually gonna bite this thing down a little bit get kind of close and then cut his angle off to get to the outside right pretty good read there just in case uh just in case the runner ended up going um uh, you know like you know just just in case he ended up in this trash here you know what i mean uh just in the box or whatever but he ended up bouncing it outside but jordan lewis stayed patient he stayed at home if, if jordan lewis would have ran up in the box then he would have been blocked by lane or something and then the running back would be able to bounce it outside and there would be no help there but the fact that jordan stayed at home you see him standing at home reading read and when you bounce outside i'm there to make the tackle fantastic play let's take a look at jordan lewis on this play and this is a, a fantastic example of his uh coverage ability i like him in man coverage pardon me man but uh wearing this uh one high look we got a safety back here um and jordan is going to be on the slot guy right just take a look at jordan let's just watch him real quick let's just watch him and this just really jumped out on tape to me man like okay jordan didn't make this play like they threw it to somebody else or whatever let's talk about why uh carson Wentz threw the ball to somebody else and i hate watching film on on dbs i normally just look at the uh trenches but this was fun this play was fun jordan is going to give an inside release here for a couple of reasons jordan is going to give the inside release but he's really going to get a good back turn to the sideline right here right you see jordan turning his back to the sideline and he's facing the field he's facing the part of the field that has the most the most real estate here right couple reasons why jordan did that or at least why i feel like he did that right for one if we get to the top of this break he's covered in every direction 
He's a smart nickel corner. Um, if this wide receiver, what is this, Nelson Aguilar or something? If this wide receiver goes upfield, let's say he decides to cut outside, right? If he breaks and 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 goes outside, he would have to go through Jordan Lewis to get there. You know what I mean? And Jordan Lewis playing physically, he'll be able to react and adapt to it and get back outside, right? What if the receiver wanted to continue to run upfield? Cool. Then Jordan Lewis would just it, it, it ain't even a big hip turn to get from to get from where Jordan Lewis is here to get here and then just to run straight. That's not even a big hip turn. So if he wanted to run straight, Jordan is in good position to run straight with him or to uh, to fade or stack whatever the receiver wanted to do. Plus, we got help up top. Plus, we got some, uh, some um, safety help. So that's cool there. But what ended up happening, the receiver breaks down. He ends up going to the inside. What's the best part about the receiver breaking down and going inside? Jordan Lewis is facing that direction all day. So he ain't got to change directions. He don't have to uh he don't have to stop his course and adjust or anything. He could just continue to go that direction because he that's what he set up the whole time. And I thought that was just dope, man. I thought it was dope how he took Nelson Aguilar out to play and he took him out to play in multiple directions. He couldn't go anywhere. Um, he couldn't go anywhere because be, just because of the angle Jordan Lewis took, just because of the direction that he turned his he turned his back to the sideline, man. He was able to 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 cover all bases there, and I just thought that was a really smart football play, and I wanted to share it with y'all. But that's that. Rewind this thing if you learn something. Don't forget it. It will be on. The my cable bill was way too high. I reached out to AffordableSticks.com. They sent me a fire stick, plugged that thing into the HDMI. Now I get unlimited shows, movies, and live TV. I'm a huge sports fan, so I love League Pass, Sunday Ticket, and I get the pay-per-view fights for free. That's something for the whole family. You can buy a fire stick for every TV in the house and still spend less money than you would on cable. That's AffordableSticks.com. There's a link in my description. You should go click it. So I talked about the Jordan Lewis blitz on the defense film session, but I want to do it in a little more detail on the Jordan Lewis film session, right? This Jordan Lewis here, he's going to be in the nickel. He's going to blitz, right? But it's a couple more elements to this blitz that made it all work. There's a little bit of uh, of uh, misdirection. We're going to confuse the offensive line a little bit. We're going to switch the blocking scheme, and uh, we're going to let Jordan Lewis come home free. But in order to really get a good idea of it, a good understanding, I want to look at it in cartel view the 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 beloved cartel view now we know jordan lewis is off the screen somewhere right because it's the cartel view but if i'm a center and i'm making my calls the one thing i think that made this work that made jordan lewis run free is the presence of joe thomas right here right joe thomas is going to step up in the line of scrimmage now if i'm the center and i'm making the calls you see the center pointing at jalen smith right there that's them saying hey man jalen smith don't necessarily belong to us he's going to be the mic we're not blocking the mic in this scenario why because we got to block this guy <laughs> we got to block 48 so what happens is if you're an offensive lineman we want uh we want a three versus three scenario so we're making our count uh center guard tackle which is one two and three is going to be malik joe and d law one two and three so the so the farthest outside guy that we're going to block would be um would be uh lane johnson to uh to d law but what we but if you're an offensive lineman what you want is you want to switch that count you want the count to be backside a gap for the center whoever that may be because we don't know and we want to just push everything over one gap to where the guard ends up blocking d law the tackle blocks jordan lewis and we're not going to be responsible for 48 that just means you know carson needs to get rid of the ball or whatever but what happens is that 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 joe um joe thomas steps in boom and he's technically accounted for what's going on right here with this right guard he's looking at malik but if malik doesn't come doesn't come his gap he's going to release to joe thomas if joe thomas comes his gap then he'll then then he'll um then he'll release and go block him but joe thomas bailed out see thomas bailed out see that see, see see this guard looking back just in case anything came his gap because he because he needs to be aware of backside b gap and he's in terrible position by the way but that's his business uh, but joe thomas bails out but what ends up happening is what they want to happen they want this guard to be able to block d law but they didn't communicate it and lane johnson didn't see anything coming back outside because hey d law is going back inside but the cardinal rule is if something is going inside something got to go back where you just came from and that happened to be Jordan Lewis. <laughs> Jordan Lewis happened to be C-Gap guy. Now, what is supposed to happen is 
This guard is supposed to block Malik by himself. This tackle is to look up and check for Joe Thomas. When Joe Thomas bails out, he looks back and see what's going on B-gap, and that'll be Demarcus Lawrence. And then Lane Johnson will be picking up 27, Jordan Lewis. But I guess Demarcus Lawrence uh, pissed off Lane Johnson a few too many times, and he just got too caught up in the smoke. And once Lane Johnson turned those shoulders, Hey man, Jordan Lewis got his hands all over, uh, all over the boy Carson Wentz, and it was funny. It is what it is, fella. Hey man, that's all I gotta say uh, for this video. I'm going to drop a Sean Lee film session later in the week. Y'all stay tuned for that. Um, it might be tomorrow, maybe the day after. I don't know, but um, hey, but we got the Giants coming up, so I'm potentially gonna be doing some Giants work, and we could probably do a roundtable this week uh, since we didn't have any football to break down last week. All right, y'all hold it down for the Doski Wolves and the Peaceki Whiskey Man. Salute. After canceling my cable, I saved twenty four hundred dollars this year by switching to Beast TV through ChannelsForCheap.com. Some people pay two hundred plus dollars a month. I paid one twenty a year, or you can go fifteen a month if that's what's convenient for you. You get twenty five hundred HD channels. A thousand of those are in English, and there are plenty of other international channels, TV guide, and we get all the sports. One of my favorite things is this multi screen feature. So if I don't know what I want to watch, I can tune into four different channels at one time that you can watch on four different devices, and it's available on Fire Stick, smart TVs, tablets, and if you're on the go, you can watch TV on your phone. Hit the link in my description or go to channelsforcheap.com where you can get a free seven-day trial. That's a whole week for you to just sit down and play with it and see what you like about it. Then come back and make a purchase. If you have any questions, go to channelsforcheap.com. Hit this little button right here and they'll respond to you immediately. That is channels number four cheap.com. The link is in the description. I highly recommend it. Let's do it. The YouTube Illuminati is taking money away from your favorite content creators, and people often ask the best way to support the channel directly. I tell them that's subscribing on my Patreon. Just $1 a month would increase production and the frequency of uploads. Basically, that means more content for you. For less than a bag of almond M&Ms, you can support the channel, call dibs on requests for future videos, and you can have access to Patreon-exclusive material like my throwback film sessions. That's patreon.com slash Lombardi. I appreciate the support. Doski Woski. Salute.